Hunt in October and Crimson Tide. Yeah, there were some. There were a lot of really cool moments and a lot of nice big models. Now, Hunt for October, that was a, that was a good film. You know, um, Ron Gress was our lead painter, and I learned a ton of stuff from him. Greg Jean ran ran the shop. He did a fabulous job. Ours was uh, it was pretty big. The biggest problem we had with that is the model movers could only take a certain amount of weight. And we had to figure out a way to make this submarine as light as possible, yet rigid so it wouldn't flex on the, uh, the mover. So we came up with an idea of uh, making it like a parade float. So the whole inner structure was basically like a big hoop skirt with welded and bent aluminum. And then we had, uh, I think Milius Roman did the master patterns for the submarine out of wood. And we sent them over to... Uh, Universal had a big vacuum former, so we vacuum formed all these big shell components and then the pop riveted them on there. So it, I don't think it was more than 300 pounds at the end. Yeah, it was literally a parade float. You could get three people in there laying down. <laughs> Our models went to ILM. Uh, ILM built a separate one after that, which was the one they used at the Academy. They had everybody posing around, and I saw the photo and went like, well, that's definitely not the one we made because it's too damn small. <laughs> And uh, there was a moment when we had the DS, not the DSV, the, um, the Russian sub. The, we call it the can of olives, the colonel of fluff. I used to be able to say that. Anyway, called the can of olives. It was four foot and, and a kula, and it was perfect. We had the design, it was sculpted, it was gorgeous model, accurate, a kula, 20th scale. And the Navy had been coming around because they were sort of funding this and the flight of the intruder at that same time. So they wanted to see what we were doing. And they were also checking on, like, you know, national security kind of things. And so they looked at the said, that's great, nice job. And then they looked at our, I think that was the Dallas. I do get the two movies mixed up sometimes. And the Dallas was a uh, Los Angeles class attack sub, which is our hero. Well, we had the acoustical tiles cut into the thing. And they went, that is really gorgeous. You know, you've got every damn acoustical tile here. You know, the Russians could look at this and count our tiles and know how many we have, and we really don't want them to do that. So would you mind, like, like, like killing every other one, you know, like putting putty and making every other one go away so it's half the number? Of course, what can Greg say? Well, yeah, of course. And there's a photo I got somewhere of this huge thing with thousands of tiles, and every, between every one we had to fill it with putty and say, oh, God, what a job. So here's our Akula model. And we have a, a huge mold, $500 of rubber for this mold, and we got a casting, and Nick Selden and I have put this thing together, and I prime it, and here comes the director, McTarran. And he comes in, and he looks like always. Wow, that's really cool. You know, why don't you cut four inches out of the middle? It'll be shorter, shorter and it'll look meaner, and walks away. <laughs> well, four inches out of 48-inch model is kind of... The problem with the sub is it's not quite a cigar, which means, okay, let's cut two parallel lines into this. No, the damn sub does this. I'm exaggerating, but it does that. So you not only have to cut, I mean, this way, but you're cutting on like a cone, not a cylinder. Oh, I got that job. And because it was fiberglass, you're like using these, these little X-Acto saws and burning them out and getting a new one and, and then put it together. And that, oh, by the way, that, that mold, it was trash because you can't cut the mold four inches out of the mold and put it together. Start over. So to this day, I'm sure you like me agree that when you watch The Hunt for October, when you see that, that Russian Akula, if it was a little longer, it would be nearly as menacing. Well, the thing is, they wanted that, that the fine detail that, like, you know, don't step warning, you know, the, the, the little stuff that your eye sees, but your mind doesn't usually register. But if it's not there, you say, I'm not buying this scene, you know. I can make the fake script, but really when it comes down to it, I'd just rather write, paint something very small, you know, I mean, write stuff with a paintbrush. So I wrote the Latin Crato. You know, cum santo spiritus and doni de patris. You know, I just, I, I wrote the Crato out. <laughs> and these little boxes of warning and things, you know. So, you know, because it's easier to make fake letters, I actually write letters.
but uh, in fact, on one of them, one of these little panels, it was the warning. And the warning was, in case of fire. And I wrote, don't just stand there, put the damn thing out. <laughs> we had to do um, the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. I often, as, as I sort of moved up in responsibility at Boss, uh, I was often in on some of the dailies when we would, you know, see what our stuff looked like. So they, they wanted a model shop. During Hunt for October, we had to just sit through our footage. Now, the thing is, they had all this cloud tank footage, tons of it. And you think about it. You know, we're doing long hours, and you sit in this dark room. Often we lay these cloud tanks. I mean, one tank after another. Good night, you know. I got some good. I got some good naps I needed right there. But you know, when it's time for real footage, okay. And now we go through all the CGI footage. Okay, that's nice.